Thank you so much and congratulations. What a fantastic film. I got to watch it the other day. Well, oh, goes to him. He's the, he's the filmmaker. Oh, I think you might have played a small part in this I'm as just, well. You're I'm it just out. on camera. <laughs> he's in it. <laughs> James Cameron, I think most people would see this deep sea challenge as coming from a bit of left field, I guess. What is it that, yeah. that drives you with no experience to go out and not just build a submarine, but build a record-breaking submarine. Yeah. Well, actually, that, that's, that's sort of what people think, because this mm -hmm. kind of popped up to the world stage. But in reality, this was my eighth deep ocean expedition over almost, uh, I think, an, a 17-year period. And, and I'd been involved in a, a number of prior engineering projects, building robotics to explore inside Titanic, uh, three expeditions to Titanic. 82 submersible dives, a number of, of uh, you know engineering projects to build cameras and lights and all that. So this was the culmination of a whole process that started back in really 1995. And certainly there must be a tipping point though when you look back where you see that it's gone from perhaps an interest to a white hot passion. A full on avocation, yeah. Well I think after Titanic, after Titanic I took a, a six year hiatus to do exploration, did a number of, of expeditions during that time. Then I came back to Hollywood to do Avatar. And while I was doing Avatar, which took four and a half years, we were building the Deep Sea Challenger in parallel with that. So on my lunch breaks and, and after hours, I'm Skyping with Sydney, you know, with Ron Allen, the chief engineer down here, and, and seeing how the sub's going, you know. So the answer to the question of is he a filmmaker or is he an explorer is really simple. He's both. Yeah, it's still up in the air. Yeah, it's still up in the depends, air. Or depends where you are. Or under the water. I mean, you talked about filling up notebooks with scribbles and ideas. Yeah. How hard was it to take those notes from the paper to the workshop and ultimately to the sea? It's very daunting and, and you go through a number of hurdles and challenges. You know, fortunately Ron Allum, who's based right, right here in Sydney, he built a little workshop and he just tested, tested, tested all the materials, hundreds and hundreds of samples. We had to create new materials to build this sub. And we had to learn a lot of new arts that, that we didn't necessarily know in, in metallurgy and finite element analysis and all that. A lot of really geeky engineering stuff that I, that I absolutely thrive on and that Ron thrives on as well. So to me, half of it is the exploration and the diving and the, and the expedition. The other half of it is the engineering challenge. You know, building the sub, let, making sure that it can perform its task and do it safely and get the pilots back because Ron was a pilot and I was the pilot. It's extra incentive to make sure you get it right. Very high incentive, <laughs> yes, exactly. It made, our, it made our math a little more accurate. And how difficult was it for you, Ray, to take what many would see as a dry, unsexy subject which is submarine engineering and turn that into something that's not just appealing for the public, but understandable. I had to do a very quick course in submersible engineering, deep, <laughs> o deep ocean exploration. Uh -huh. So my, uh -huh. my learning curve went, went, <laughs> went like this. Really peaked, and then yeah. of course I came in and there was over 1200 hours of uh, existing footage of the, uh, the building of the submersible, the, uh, the exploration the, uh, the, uh, and the expedition. And I was trying to piece all that together into a, into a narrative structure that, uh, that told the story of this, well, what is the most incredible solo dive. Well, Ray, Ray made it a human story. You know, me and the, and the, the engineers, uh, the, the people who built the sub, going to sea against those challenges, dealing with the loss of our expedition leader, you know, and Ray's predecessor as the director of the film, Andrew White, who is also, you know, Australian. And certainly you've talked about the loss of your colleagues in the helicopter crash yes. here in, in New South Wales. Yeah, yeah. That was a real turning point for you and, and certainly a huge blow to you professionally and personally. I think it was the moment where all of the exploration work that I had done really came crashing into this, this wall of should we really be doing this? And the answer that came out of that soul searching was yes, absolutely, of course, we have to minimize the risk down to the smallest degree. But exploration inherently has risk, but the risk is offset by the reward. Not the reward to the individual necessarily, the re reward to humanity, to science, to innovation and the inspirational value to the next generation coming up. You know, uh, between the test dives and the, and the Challenger deep dives, um, we uh, discovered 68 new species, possibly more because they're still going through the, the samples and, and so on. Uh, on the video, there were things that we weren't able to sort of catch that were swimming around. We've identified what are probably another 20 or so animals that are probably new species, but I couldn't, I couldn't grab them there, moving too quickly. And 
going down to the Mariana Trench. Talk yeah. us through what you were feeling in that descent, yeah. launching in pretty hairy conditions yeah. and getting down to what I guess was fairly visually barren. The austerity was part of the emotional impact of the place. Uh, the fact that it really felt like an extreme place, the most remote place on the planet. I was the farthest from humanity that I think it's possible to be on this planet. So there's this strong kind of emotional and maybe even, dare I say, spiritual response that you have when you're in that place. The cool thing now is that, you know, you can go down there in 3D and people can experience that environment because, right. let's face it, it's a place that not many people are ever going to get to go to. Certainly did feel that. You set the bar very high <laughs> for yourself. Is Have you have you reached your own limits here or no, is there no, another adventure the, in you? Well, there's so much more to explore. I mean, we talk about it in the film that there, at, the, at the depth of these deep trenches, if you add it all up, uh, it's an area bigger than Australia. So that's a continent that we've never explored, we've never even looked. So I could spend the rest of my life just doing that. I've got a few years to finish these Avatar sequels that we're working on right now, and then I'll be back to it. James Cameron, Ray Quint, thank you so much for your time. Okay, well You're thanks, yeah, it was a pleasure. You're welcome.